The word nuclear is often associated with dangerous things, weapons, meltdowns, terrorism, but there's a good side to nuclear too. I think there's a misconception that nuclear fusion is actually really dangerous, mm -hmm. but that's actually fission, not fusion, right? That's right, two totally different things. Fission can happen by itself as a reaction. Fusion is very hard to do. A fusion reaction can't, you know, there isn't a meltdown that's possible in a fusion reaction, so it is, it is ultimately a safe safe way to make power. Even though you're heating the plasma to millions of degrees. Our plasma starts at three or four million degrees and goes way up from there. It's a little bit like taking a match and throwing it into a bathtub. So it's very hot at that little point, but there's a massive amount of cooling material around it. So it's a very, very hot, but very small amount of fuel that's in there. General Fusion is one of dozens of companies going after this silver bullet energy solution. But the odds are not in their favor. For nearly a century, scientists have tried and failed to capture what they call lightning in a bottle. Why is nuclear fusion the answer to the world's energy crisis? This will produce energy for the whole planet. It is a source of energy that produces almost no pollution and the source of the fuel is limitless. If you extract the deuterium from the ocean, we have energy for running this planet for billions and billions of years. It's the holy grail of energy. You crack that, you have it done. What's unique about General Fusion's approach to fusion? Fusion, the big lab, have been working on two types of fusion. Laser fusion mm -hmm. and tokamak. In the tokamak, you hold this plasma with the magnetic field and you try to get the heat not to escape. Then there's the laser way of doing it. The laser way, you take a little pellet, about here big, put some fuel in it, and you shoot laser all around it, and the laser go whack, and it compresses it. There is no magnetic field in this thing. The heat can escape as fast as it wants. However, if you compress really, really fast, you compress faster than the heat escape, you can still get hotter. Their gig there is they let the heat escape, no magnetic field, but they compress very, very fast. And to compress very, very fast, they need rather expensive lasers. What we do is we take a bit of both. We say, we're gonna put our plasma in the magnetic field, and we're gonna squash it. The magnetic field prevents the heat from escaping, right. so we can squash it way slower. So in place of squashing it in one billionth of a second with a laser, we want to com compress it in one thousandth of a second with pistons. And turns out that pistons, driven by compressed air, is way cheaper than a laser. Five, four, Oh wow, that's, that is powerful right there, okay. All right, so what am I looking at right here? Ah, this is one of the plasma injector. So the way we want to do fusion is with this little machine here. What we want to do is we will have a big sphere, it'll be filled with liquid metal, and the liquid metal will spin. We inject the liquid metal tangentially, so it spins it up, and that opens a hole in the center. And two of those big machines, one on the top, one on the bottom, will inject plasma in the vortex, and after that, this will be surrounded by 200 pistons. The piston will be drive by compressed gas, and it will accelerate piston that hit the outside of the sphere. And then there's a compression wave in the liquid that will squash the plasma. And when you squash the plasma, it's gonna get denser, really it's gonna hot. get hotter, and then it's gonna be hot enough to do fusion. Fusion energy emit neutrons, so the neutron will fly out, right. will be absorbed by the metal, and all this energy will go in heat. So the liquid metal will be pumped up hotter than it came in, and that will make some steam. The steam will run a turbine, make some electricity, and some of the steam will come to run the piston. It seems as though nuclear fusion is sort of like the holy grail of the energy right. sector. The holy grail analogy I don't love to use because they never found the holy grail. Right. right. We're all making progress. We're all getting much closer. So it's, it's now inevitable, and I think it's been proven that it can be done. And the question is, commercially you know, and economically, when is it going to happen? we're gonna have abundant energy for the world forever. So it changes the dynamics of poverty, it changes our need for fossil fuels. I mean, it sound like I'm overstating it, but it'll change humanity forever.